So there you have it, the vision for 2023, the end of an era. Before we get into our message, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, God, you are so good. And Lord, we're so grateful for all that you've done for us and all that you've done for this church in the last 33 years. We're grateful for pastors Randy and Maribel and their leadership. Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless them in this next stage and next chapter of their lives. God, and we, we're, we're so grateful and we're excited for the future of Life Church. God, we know that as long as you're in it, we have nothing to worry about. But Lord, we pray for Pastor, uh, Pastor John and Pastor Andrea and uh, Randy and Maribel. Lord, we pray for them, for their emotional health, their spiritual health, their physical uh, safety, Lord. God, we just pray that you would be with them, that you would guide them, and that you would be with all of their family, their children and their grandchildren, Lord. God, we love you and we give this, we give this church, we give all of us, we give ourselves to you, Lord. So God, we honor you, we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. So God has done a lot with us this past year and now we begin this next season. And what better way to move into this next season than to look at one of my favorite books of the Bible, the book of Joshua. Now, what you see, what, what's powerful about the book of Joshua is that God has a timing for thing and things, and God's timing is often never our timing. But God is always faithful when he wants to bring certain things to pass. You see, we're, we're at the point right now in the history of the children of Israel where God is going to fulfill the promises that he's made hundreds and hundreds of years earlier. Here we go. This is what it says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. It says this. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all of these people, into the, the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you just as I have promised Moses. Now let's skip down to verse five. It says, just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Talk about a powerful beginning. Moses is now gone and we're left here with Joshua and God has given the charge to Joshua that he is now able to complete the mission that Moses was set out to do. Joshua was the guy that wherever Moses was, Joshua wanted to be. You see, because Moses spent time in the presence of God and because Moses was allowed to be there, Joshua was like, I want to be there with Moses. And what we see here is a, bib a biblical discipleship, and it even really speaks to apprenticeship. And you see, when you're an apprentice, you're, you're often being mentored under someone about something that you want to specialize in. And over time, you begin to see what the inner workings of how it really make what it takes to, to, to have that skill. But ultimately, the mentor will invest all of their knowledge into you so that way you can then take that and go on and lead. And this is exactly what happened to Joshua. And Joshua got to be in the presence of God because God was doing a work through Moses. Now, the moment Moses is gone, Joshua, who was always around Moses, is now ready to take this next step. And he moves from being apprentice to now being the leader. Joshua had learned things by watching and being around Moses. And the things that Joshua learned and that he saw were things that we saw on display all throughout this book. And I often look at my own life and I think back to uh, some, of, some of my pastors and so many of those that have mentored me and I'm so grateful for all that they've done. And I remember very early on, when I started in ministry, uh, my pastor at the time grabbed me and he said, hey, Gabe, let's go. We're going to go to the hospital. We're going to visit someone. And I said, okay, great. This sounds good. I said, this is exciting because this is what ministry is all about. This is my first time ever doing this. So we get in the car and we're, in, and we're on our way. And I, and, and I asked him, I was like, well, what do you need me to do in this process? And he looks at me and he says, 
I don't want you to do anything. If they say hi to you, you can say hi back, but nothing more. I just need you to watch now. So we get there and, and, and I love what he had told me because he, he didn't want me in my eagerness to jump in and say and do something inappropriate. And I'm so grateful for all of the lessons that I learned being under his leadership and it's really prepared me for the things that I'm facing today. And Joshua chapter one gives us a beautiful outline for the rest of the book. And it begins with them crossing over the Jordan. And this time for, for them, this is them moving past the Jordan. This is them moving past the comfortable, the natural, and they're moving into the promised land, the, the promises of God. But now remember, Moses wasn't allowed to bring the children of Israel into the promised land because he misrepresented God when he got angry at the people, but also because Moses was a picture of the law and the law can never get you into the promised land. Being religious can't get you into the promised land. And if you think about what religion is, it's, it's, it's a person's attempt to please God. And you can look at every religion. And what does that say about humanity's attempt to please God? That religion is do good and you receive heaven. Do this and you get nirvana. Do this and you get reincarnated, this or that. But it all revolves around this, I do and now I get this attitude. That's religion. And you might be listening, you might say, well, Gabe, Christianity is a religion too. Well, actually it's not. Because Christianity never says that you need to do this and then God will be happy with you. Christianity says that God sent Jesus and God is happy in Jesus. And anyone who finds themselves in Jesus, God is happy with. See, does that, does that make sense? Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people that practice Christianity. They like to say that these are my duties and this is what I'm supposed to do and God's just gonna give me heaven because that's what I want. But that's not Christianity. That's not the teachings of Jesus. The teachings of Jesus are that me left up to my own devices will only lead to rebellion against God and self-service. When you put your faith and trust in Jesus, Jesus robes us in his righteousness and shares his perfection and glory with us. And when God sees us, he sees Jesus in us and he is pleased. And people often say, I can't believe Christians would do that, this or that. I can, because the Bible never says that Christians are going to get everything right. Christians often get a lot of things wrong. And it doesn't excuse what we've gotten wrong. And we often get a lot of things wrong. And that's exactly why we believe in Jesus in the first place. But let's go a little bit deeper. Joshua had to be the person to bring the children of Israel into the promised land because the law couldn't get them there. Now look at this, the name Joshua in the Hebrew would be the word Yeshua, which then translates to English as the word Jesus. It's not by chance, it's by design. It's by design that we would always know that Jesus is the only way into the promised land, into heaven. And look at what it says in verse five. It says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And this idea of my presence will always be with you is exactly what Jesus said to his disciples at the end of Matthew's gospel. And he said to them, I want you to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I want you to teach them all of the things that I've commanded you. And I am with you even until the end of the age. See, the presence of Jesus leads us out into mission. Now, mission is a word that we use for you and I living in Christ. And because wherever you are, wherever you go, you are on mission with Jesus. And when you go into your communities, the Bible calls that being on mission. And look at what it says here in verse six. 
be strong and courageous for, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to them and to their fathers to give them. You can go down to verse nine. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Be strong and courageous. And why is that so important? You see, the reason why most of us aren't experiencing the presence of God is because we've forgotten that God is with us and we live our lives fear-based. And what is, what is God asking you to step out into? What's that thing in front of you that when you think of it, it makes your stomach turn into knots? We need to begin to preach to ourselves daily, be strong and courageous for the Lord our God is with me. And I believe that every single day that God invites us to take a step of faith that we normally wouldn't take. And that's because we forget that God will never leave us or forsake us. And do you realize that as the children of God, there is nowhere that you can go that God isn't with you. You see, he has promised us his presence and God's presence is our power. I'll say that again. God has promised us his presence and God's presence is our power. And because of his power, we get to walk in it every day in Jesus name. And I want to close by reading verses 10 and 11. It says this in verse 10, it says, Joshua commanded the officers of the people pass through the midst of the camp and command the people to prepare your provisions for within three days you are going to pass over into this Jordan and go into take possession of the land that the Lord your God has given you to possess. You see, God's been feeding the Israelites this heavenly manna every day except for the Sabbath day where they would collect twice as much and he's been doing this for 40 years. And when they go into the promised land, guess what? He's going to stop that. And now that's important because that means that the way God provides for you is, is going to be situational and not forever. And I know that can be hard for us because for some of us, we're so used to God doing something this way or, or that way. And all of a sudden it might just stop. And we, we tend to ask, well, God, where did you go? Listen, you got older, you grew up, you don't need the same things that you used to. Does that make sense? I love my son, Aaron. He's two years old and he wears diapers to bed at night. And for a two year old, that's pretty normal. Now, if I was wearing diapers, we've got some major problems. So for a two year old, it's okay. But for a 30 year old, that is very, very, bad and now I realize that maybe later on in life I have to do what I have to do uh, but we'll worry about that later but you see as you grow older you need new things but I have four points for you today and so and but don't blink because they're gonna come fast and the first one is God is preparing you for what he has prepared for you you see all of the lessons and challenges that you've been through God has been preparing you for the promises that he has. Two, God is using the hardest parts of our lives to prepare us for the best years of our lives. The third one, God is preparing you for what he will do through you. Remember, you're on mission and God is always with you and he will always work through you. And the last one, God is preparing you for the coming of the Lord. Jesus is coming, church. It's time to be ready. You see, if you're listening today and you've never said yes to Jesus, or maybe it's been a really long time, I want you to know that you're, you're not in this journey alone. And right now you can receive that free gift of salvation. You see, in Romans 10, 9, it says that if we declare with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe that our heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, that we are saved. So right now, if you declare that Jesus is Lord, repeat these words with me wherever you are. Jesus, 
I thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. Please forgive me. Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Now help me to live the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Well, if you just prayed that prayer, church, well, welcome to the family. Hey, this is just the beginning. Be sure to download our Life Church app and let us know so we can help you with this next step of your journey. I really appreciate each and every one of you, and thank you so much for joining us today for such a historic event. But be sure to like, subscribe, and comment on this video. But we will see you next week. But always remember that I love you, Jesus loves you. Have a great week.